Привет, my friends. It's Shane, the main reactor. I apologize for my absence, guys. It's been a few days. It's been a lot to take in, right? It's been, uh, it's just, what can I say? Uh, you know, to be honest, when the 24th hit and I woke up to messages from my subscribers telling me what was going on, I was shocked. I was shocked as everybody else, I guess. Uh, you know, and, and I didn't, I didn't want to jump to conclusions like everybody else, you know, everybody wants to jump to conclusions and, and blame Russia and blame the president of Russia for what's going on. But there's a lot that people are not seeing. There's a whole nother side to this situation that people aren't seeing and nobody wants to talk about. I want to talk about it because it needs to be, it needs to be seen by not only American people, because we don't know this stuff, and I'm a proud American, I love my country, and I want to say that right off the bat, I'm a very proud American, I, I, I served my country in the military, I love America, and it's real sad to me that we haven't been shown any of this, I was just talking to my mother after work today, I went down there, to pick something up and you know I explained that there's two sides to this story and I explained what you guys are about to see I started to tell them a little bit about what was going on and the, f the, the first thing my mom said is well why why wouldn't they show us why why don't they show us this you know she was very concerned because she she obviously believes me and she knows that the people that I talk to she knows me well enough to know that I don't, I'm not just going to believe anything. And that's the problem right now in America, at least, is that people don't, they're only seeing one side, one side of this. I knew almost, almost instantly when the Russian military went in to Ukraine by their professionalism that the Russian military has displayed. They're not going in there guns blazing. They're not trying to hurt civilians, innocent people. It's just not happening. There's plenty of proof of that. That's not their intent. And I knew my Russian friends and you know people that I even know from the Russian military, I know that they're good people and that they wouldn't go out and try to hurt their own people, right? Ukraine, just like Belarus, I mean, they, they, they're brothers and sisters. They, they don't want to hurt good Ukrainian people. A lot of my friends that I talk to have family in Ukraine, have friends in Ukraine. They don't want to hurt these people, right? They don't, they don't even want Ukraine. They don't need Ukraine. Russia's huge. They have all the resources that they need. They have no reason to put up with the type of sanctions that they're getting right now just to, to have Ukraine. It doesn't make any sense, right? It just doesn't make sense. There's a huge cover-up that's going on. I don't know why yet. Um, you know, just like everything else, I think the truth will come out in the end. But there's some things I want people to see. Some very important things. This first video is very short, but this is the former president of Ukraine. And what he's about to say is basically that he wants to put, make sure that all the kids that are living in the Don's, Donetsk uh, area, the Donbass area, anybody that supports Russia basically in that area, he wants to make sure that they're living in bomb shelters. They're not allowed to go to school. He won't let them speak their native language. They're not even allowed to speak Russian. But it gets way worse than that. That's just the tip of the spear. It gets much, much worse. But we'll start with this because there's another video I want to show you after this. And you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about, guys. And I, I just want you to keep an open mind, right? This is a, a situation that's unfolding. War is not good. We all know that. Nobody wants war. Not a single one of my Russian subscribers wants 
this. Nobody wants it, but it had to be done. I feel like the war in the Donbass was a never-ending war. If And, you know, the, the fact is the representatives from those, those areas uh, in the Donbass asked Russia for help. And you'll see why. There's a very good reason why they asked for help. And any one of us would have done the same thing. And I know for, for guaranteed that America would have done the same thing if this was our situation. We would have done the same thing that Russia's doing. And not one person is going to tell me otherwise after you see this stuff, guys. This video is very short. The next video I'm going to show you was made by an American named Graham Phillips. But I want you to watch and then we'll talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. But keep an open mind. There, there is two sides to this. And I don't know why yet. There's obviously a reason that's way over my head. A political reason. That we haven't been shown this. That this has been covered up. But it's true. It's happening. Just take a look. So this is the first video. Because if we have work, there is no one. If у нас пенсії будуть, у них немає. У нас піклування під дітей, під людей, під пенсіонерів, під дітей буде, у них немає. У нас діти підуть до школи, до дитячих садків, у них вони будуть сидіти в підвалах. Бо вони нічого не вміють робити. І так, і саме так ми виграємо цю війну. So yeah. Um clearly that was the intent, right? Oh, we got the uh, song here. So, I mean, that was the ex-president basically saying that he's going to make anybody that is pro-Russia, basically, any citizen, innocent citizen, children, women living in that area, that they're going to force them to, be, to live in bomb shelters and in basements. They're not going to have any type of help from the government, anything. They're just basically left there to, to rot and to be fired upon, bombed. All right, this is the next video that I really want to show. Again, please keep an open mind. All right, guys, so this is the second video that I want you to see. Please, again, keep an open mind. Do your own research. I'm a firm believer in doing your own research. You clearly can't believe everything that we're hearing. So, you know, I'm the type of person, I research everything. And I've talked to so many people and looked at so many different things about this situation. But please, watch, listen, keep an open mind. Payeli, let's go. Russia's military campaign in Ukraine began after the Donbass republics were officially recognized by Russia. We see here the signing ceremony with President Putin on February the 21st. After eight years of war, or rather eight years of the Donbass republics being under attack by Ukraine, both the republics swiftly appealed to President Putin for military assistance to end the conflict. Notice they say attacked, continuously attacked by Ukraine. The Donbass area was being attacked by Ukraine, their own people, not by Russia, like everybody thinks. It's simply not true. President Putin announced Russia's military action with the following statement. Санкции Совета Федерации России и во исполнение ратифицированных Федеральным собранием 22 февраля сего года договоров о дружбе и взаимопомощи с Донецкой Народной Республикой и Луганской Народной Республикой. Мною принято решение о проведении специальной военной операции. Ее цель – защита людей, которые на протяжении 8 лет подвергаются издевательствам, геноциду со стороны киевского режима. And he's using the UN Charter as well here. And he's 100% he's correct. 
I mean, these republics are appealing to Russia for help because they have been attacked, bombed, had innocent children, women murdered. They're not allowed to speak their own language. I mean, they've been bullied. Genocide's a huge word to use. I don't know if genocide is the right... I mean, in a way, it's the right term to use because that's what these factions of the Ukraine military are trying to do. So I, I do agree with the word genocide in this case. But, yeah, it's not the Donbass being attacked by Russia. It's the Donbass being attacked by Ukraine. И для этого мы будем стремиться к демилитаризации и денацификации Украины, а также приданию суду тех, кто совершил многочисленные кровавые преступления. And I think this is the part that, as Americans, we're blinded to. You know, we're just not shown. It's not our fault. It really isn't. You know, Americans are good people, just like Russians, just like Ukrainians. We're good people, but we're, we've been lied to we haven't been shown what's really going on we're just we're just made to think that putin is this horrible person and russia just wants territory it's all crap ukraine and russia are brothers and sisters they are the same people just like belarus i have so many subscribers that have family in ukraine great best friends in Ukraine. Russia does not dislike Ukraine. They love Ukraine. But they're also not the type, just like the United States ain't the type, to sit back while their people, and I say their people as in Ukrainian people, as well as Russian citizens in Ukraine, are being murdered by Nazis. Nazi battalions that are part of the Ukrainian military, not paramilitary groups. You will see here that there are battalions in the Ukrainian military that are Nazi battalions, fascists. That's un it's completely unacceptable. Completely unacceptable that Ukraine has not taken care of this problem on their own. So now, Russia doesn't have a choice. They have to go in. They have to protect the people. And I believe, and another reason I believe this is because of the way that the Russian soldiers have acted. Absolutely professional. They're not going in there with guns a blazing. They're not going in there trying to hurt women and children, civilians. It just hasn't happened. There's plenty of proof do your own research. Like I said, there's plenty of proof showing that the Russian soldiers have conducted themselves professionally. And there's a reason for it. Преступления против мирных жителей, в том числе и граждан Российской Федерации. При этом в наши планы не входит оккупация украинских территорий. Мы никому и ничего не собираемся навязывать силой. Вместе с тем мы слышим, что в последнее время... Strong words. And with that, on February the 24th, after years of Ukraine telling us that they're at war with the Russian army in Donbass, Ukraine got to see the actual Russian army. As the Western media then rushed to tell us that Putin's reasons for sending the Russian army into Ukraine were a myth, a pretext, etc. That what does denazification mean? Putin's justification for Russia's Ukraine invasion debunked point by point. They, we, we're being told that it's not true, that Volensky is Jewish, so therefore that there's no way that they can have a, a fascist military. You're about to see proof. As they refuse to believe, or rather refuse to report or convey to their readers and viewers that Putin's reasons for going into Ukraine were actually to end a war which seemed otherwise never ending because the Ukrainians refused to accept 
that a place that is Donbass, where surveys consistently showed over 90% of people opposed to Euromaidan, had the right to break away from rule by their Euromaidan regime. And a war in Donbass kept going by Ukrainian extremist, far, far right, yes, neo-Nazi organizations and battalions. And don't just take my word for it, here's either my own footage or verified footage from Donbass. And again, this is battalions of the Ukrainian military. This is not just a far-right group that's fighting. No. This is part of the Ukrainian military. They have military equipment, military vehicles. You'll see. This, this, is, this is Nazism. And we cannot forget history, guys. We can't forget. Of all countries in World War II, everybody in World War II lost people. But I believe it was somewhere in the nature, the tune of 60 million Russian people were murdered by the fascists in World War II. Far greater than any other country. I did a reaction to the video called The Fallen of World War II. If you haven't seen the video, uh, don't go watch my video. I don't care, but... Go watch the actual video, The Fallen of World War II, and you'll see what I'm talking about. The Azov Battalion. Do your own research. One of several openly neo-Nazi battalions which are part of Ukraine's armed forces. Again, this is not... Your American neo-Nazi groups, the paramilitary groups that we have. It's not. This is like having a neo-Nazi group in the U.S. Army or the U.S. Marine Corps all wearing swastikas on their uniforms. I'm not joking. This is, it's 100% true. You can look it up yourself. Absolutely unacceptable. It's no wonder that Russia... I'm surprised Russia waited as long as they did to be to be 100% truthful with you. So this is the emblem of the Azov Battalion. Looks very similar, don't it, to the emblem of the SS Division Das Reich. The worst of the worst Nazis during World War II. And this is the Nazi Black Sun, as you see here in the background of the Azov Battalion's logo. And you got the SS symbol as well. Openly Nazi units in Ukraine's armed forces. Murdering their own people. Bombing their own people. Horrific war crimes. Bombing kindergartens. There's something called the uh, Alley of Angels. It's just a bunch of names of children that have been bombed by Ukraine, not Russia. It wasn't Russia. It's Ukraine. Killing their own people. Ukraine! <laughs> Poster of Ukrainian Battalion Azov. Faithful successes of German Nazis. <laughs> you see all the swastikas? They're giving the... I won't, even get a, I won't even do it, but they're giving the Nazi salute. Nazi salute. SS. Got the swastika. Oh, look in a NATO flag. That's nice. NATO Azov Battalion SS Nazi symbolization, and then you got the swastika, and then you have the Nazi salutes. Does this look like a pro-military or a paramilitary group, guys? With this kind of equipment? No. This is part. Of the Ukraine armed forces. Oh, 
на русском. А вы увидели такие символы на Азов? Есть такие символы, которые значение как фашизм? Символика, да, на касках было вот это. Ну да, вот он только вот не такой то вот, да, свастика была, да. И на машинах была. Свастика. Ну да. Это значит, что они нации. Ну да. All right, here they are driving through in a military vehicle, all geared up in their military attire and their Nazi fascist symbols. Driving through a civilian area, just randomly shooting at people's homes. Нельзя уходить. Айдар говорили, Айдар, Айдаров. Они грабили, грабили, все дома грабили. Нас не выпускали. Мы... It's another one of the battalions, Айдар battalion, Айдар battalion, another openly Nazi battalion that is part of the Ukrainian armed forces that have been committing war crimes and atrocities in the Donbass for eight years. Мы сидели вот там вот, в подземелье. Robbing everything from these people. И послали ребятишек, послали 19, 18, 20 лет. Три дня назад украинская армия заставляла нас, людей, которые здесь остались, молодых ребят, насильно под автоматами петь гимн Украины. Мы отказались это делать, поскольку мы его просто не знаем, мы не хотим его петь. За это были прикладами битые. Когда мы начали возмущаться, некоторых ребят взяли, привязали к столбам. Having Nazi battalions in their military go and commit war crimes and atrocities on innocent people, women, children. В это пойдет в эфир. А затем они с наглой усмешкой начали грабить дома и все выносить все оборудование, аппаратуры и грузить машины. Это называется мародерство. А кто был не И снимешь, короче, деревню саму, хорошо? Окей. All right, this is a member of the ADAR battalion. That's a female. She's going to openly shoot an RPG rocket-propelled grenade into a village in Donbass where other ADAR members joke with her about it. So just randomly shoot. She's not shooting at Russian troops here. There's no Russian troops in the area. She's shooting into a residential area not probably not even aiming, just it's ridiculous. Не очень четко, но она. Хз. Korolovka, May 2015, Nelly arrives at the scene where her son and granddaughter were killed by Ukrainian shelling. Nelly addressing the Ukrainian army. You scumbags, you scumbags, may you all be damned for now and for all time. This is not what we've all been told. She's saying there was no militia here, you animals, swine. Why did they kill my child? Why? There's no military in these areas that the Ukrainian 
Nazi forces are shelling and killing people. You've seen them driving around just shooting at random houses, shooting RPG rockets into residential areas just randomly, shelling these areas. There's no military there. The Ukrainian military, it was, it was fascism, the National Guard. Yes. Well, it, it was fascism, but it was, well, uh, fascism on new study. It was combined with nationalism, fascism plus nationalism. It's an Ukrainian phenomenon. It's a very disgusting phenomenon. You see how he looked around before he said it was disgusting. He just wanted to make sure that nobody heard him say it because he fears for his life. Again, this is not a paramilitary group, guys. This is part of the Ukraine Armed Forces. Ukrainian ultranationalists are commonly referred to as Banderovits due to their worship of World War II Ukrainian Nazi collaborator Stefan Bandera. He was a real piece of trash. The red and black flag of Ukraine's World War II Nazi collaborators. The UPA is also used by the neo-Nazi Pravi or Pravi sector, also fighting in the Donbass. Innocent, huh? Более того, по имеющейся информации, и это подтверждается результатами объективного контроля, мы видим это. Бендеровцы и неонацисты выставляют тяжелое вооружение, в том числе системы залпового огня, прямо в центральных районах крупных городов. See, we're all being told this is all lies. It's just, just excuses. You're gonna see the proof. I mean, there's proof of it. it says that the Banderovets, or however you pronounce that, Nazis, we'll just call them Nazis because that's what they are, and the neo-Nazis deploy heavy weapons, including multiple launch rocket systems, right in the central areas of large cities, including Kiev and Kharkov. There's a reason for that. They want to draw fire from the Russians and then blame the Russians for hurting civilians in these, these areas, these, these uh, residential areas. The Russians aren't going to do that. They're a professional military, and they're good people, and I believe that. And they've conducted themselves like that so far. Включая Киев и Харьков, они планируют вызвать ответный огонь российских ударных комплексов по жилым кварталам. По сути, они действуют так же, как и террористы во всем мире. He says they act the same way as terrorist groups around the world. Hundred percent correct. Прикрываются людьми в надежде затем обвинить Россию в жертвах среди мирного населения. Еще раз обращаюсь к военнослужащим вооруженных сил Украины. Не позволяйте неонацистам и бендеровцам использовать ваших детей, ваших жен и стариков в качестве живого щита. That's something you just don't do. Anybody that was in the military knows what I'm talking about. You do anything to 
to take the fighting out of those areas where there's a lot of people. You try to try to avoid that. They're trying, trying so hard to get Russians to fight them in these areas so that they can say and put on the news, which would happen. <laughs> you know, that'll be the next thing that you'd see in the news is that Russia is attacking residential areas. It's not true. Подбитый танк, что ли, украинский тянут. see all the heavy artillery right next to apartment buildings. Between two schools. They set up their artillery in Mari Mariupol between two schools. Между двух школ. Вот так они, блядь, защитники гребаные, блядь, текают нахуй. Между двух школ, брат, смотри. БТРы. Он танк. Блять, смотрите, что происходит на Аболоне, блядь. Ебать, вся Аболонь, блядь, все мужчины, блядь, собираются, блядь. Посмотрите, как все будет. Приходите, приходите, мы вас будем всех встречать. Без, даже без документов раздают. Приходи, защищай свое государство. This wouldn't be as crazy in a place like the United States where we all own guns, we all pretty much know how to use firearms from a young age. They don't have that kind of training. They're just handing these out to civilians. They've even released people from prisons to go fight in the Donbass against their own people. Slava Ukraine. However, the Russians did not enter Kiev on the night of the 25th, 26th, so the newly armed residents of Kiev started shooting each other. Вон они на той, они в парке, и вот здесь возле АТБ, короче, вот один, один лёг, один лёг, короче, один лёг. And remember here, Russian troops aren't in this area. They're not. Короче, не знаю, то ли наши справа, то ли... То ли что... Yeah, there's two sides to this. And, you know, for the 20th time during this video, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate any of you that kept an open mind. Do your own research. But it's not at all what we're being told is going on. Not at all. Real surprised, actually that Russia waited eight years to do this. But 
yeah, I hope this brought to light some things for people and, you know, take this and run with it and, and do your own research and formulate your own, your, your own decision on this, you know, and, uh, don't listen to just don't listen to me. I don't expect any of you to be like, oh, for for sure. If he says, you know, we'll believe. Don't believe anything I say. Do your own research. Again, I've done so much research, and I've talked to people in this area for the last week. So yeah, there's a lot more that's going on that we're not being told that that's been hidden from us. For whatever reason, man, wouldn't I like to know the reason? I could think of a couple things, you know, that... I'm not even going to comment on that, but... I mean, there's there's definitely a cover-up going on, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, the American people are, are led to believe that Ukrainian... The Ukraine government is innocent, and I'm again, I'm not talking about the Ukrainian people. The Ukrainian people are good people. I'm not. I, I don't want to for, say for a second that because the government allows these Nazis to be to to be in the military, that that makes Ukrainian people bad. Because it doesn't. There's plenty of good, good, good Ukrainian people, and there's plenty of really, really good Russian people. But there is is a problem that the Ukrainian government gave orders to these Nazi groups to go out and kill the people in the Donbass, to murder, to bully them for eight years until finally, you know, they pleaded and begged on their hands and knees, begged Russia to come in and help them. How can we blame Russia for that? Like, it just, we can't. We just can't. You know, and it's, it's unfolding. I mean, they're... There could be new facts that come out and, you know, you know, I'm always trying to learn different things and, and hear different sides of and look at all different angles and, and viewpoints. And but as of right now, I'm, I'm 100 percent confident in saying that I believe Russia is 100 percent justified for going in. And I also want to say again that the, the Russian military has been absolute professionals, real soldiers, not this trash. They're not going in there. They're not hurting innocent people. They don't want to do that. These are their brothers and sisters. Russia loves Ukraine. They really do. That's why they're there. So... I appreciate you guys listening. Thank you so much. I love you guys. You know how we roll here on Main Reactor. Always, guys. It's all, we always roll. Peace.